Tampoco se sentía bien el lam para esos jóvenes de cuatro o cinco años, sino con los candeleros, para que alumbre a todos los que estén en casa. Y de la misma manera que la, que la luz de ustedes alumbre delante de todos, para que todos vean sus buenas obras y glorifiquen a su Padre que está en el cielo. Tau Paya Kopen Kapu, Muntau Pawesi, 
Good morning, church. How is, how is everyone doing this morning? Good? Awake? Or you need to stand up? No, you're good? All right. Our theme for this morning is who you are. Or this is who you are. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are American. 
you are Filipinos, you are Hispanic, and you are Cambodian. Am I forgetting someone? Oh, you are Tongan. You know, that's what I always receive when someone who knows our culture and our customs sees me wearing my Tongan, full Tongan attire. It is not a question, but an aff affirmation of my identity. Pastor Lynette and I lived and worked at Blue Ridge Assembly in North Carolina, one of the largest YMCA conference center in the United States. Who knows the Blue Ridge Assembly, YMCA? Anybody? You can look it up. Lynette was the chaplain, and I was the dorm director for the women's staff. Every year, the center can hold around 1,000 guests at one time, which is why it directs college students worldwide to work there for the experience every summer. And towards the end of their stay, each group takes a photos to hang on the dining room or the dining hall wall, just for the history. And for all the three years we were there, we never met a Tongan guest. Except for one day, we got a surprise call from the office that a Tongan guest wanted to meet us. He saw one of our pictures on the, at the dining hall, and our Davala got his attention. And may, may I show the pictures on the, on the screen? Can you focus a little more? That's about it. See, that's me with my, you know, Davala. And Lynette, Pastor Lynette is on my side. And that, that was in 2001. Can you go to the next picture? That's 2002. I didn't wear my Davala, but something different. Can someone point it out? What, what different at the, in the picture? Lynette is holding a child. That's our firstborn. That's Fini right there. She turned 20, 21 in January. So the, the guest saw, the, the, saw a picture with my Davala, and he, you know, he caught his, his attention, and Davala is a mat that we wear in our, you know, wear in our waist. And it's a, it symbolizes respect, in our culture, and that's what makes us unique and maybe separated us from the rest of the world. And you could imagine, you can imagine our excitement to meet this Tongan friend who visited the YMCA. But as we got there, the staff who called us pointed to this guy. And when I looked at him, I could tell from afar that he didn't even look close to be a Tongan. We were confused. And as we finally spoke to him, he said, you are Tongan, and I am a Tongan too. Still, he, you know, he didn't convince me because he was a Caucasian man. Then he explained himself. He was from California. His best friend was a Tongan, and when, he, when his own family kicked him out, his best friend's family took him in, adopted him like a son. And that was the reason behind him calling himself, I am Tongan. But I believe that our identity is more than our cultural distinctiveness. What we wear, what we choose, what we choose to become, or how others perceive us. Identity includes our biology. Years ago, I decided to become a naturalized American citizen with all the rights of my kids born here. However, deep down inside me, 
at the core of my existence. I am Tongan because I was born to Tongan ancestors. And it doesn't change a bit by my decision to have dual citizenship. You can all wear Dawala and look amazing, but it won't change your DNA makeup. Most of you has the same experience where someone recognize and identify you and identify who you are by your cultural distinctiveness. And yet, it doesn't change the fact that at the core of your existence, your biology is a big part of your identity. You are salt, you are light, our text for this morning is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which starts from Matthew 5 through chapter 7. Jesus established himself as an authoritative teacher. In the first 12 verses is the Beatitude, where Jesus talks about God's blessings, interprets them, and instructs them on how they should live accordingly. And moving along to our passage today, verses 13 to 20, Jesus begins this series by indicating to his audience who they are, their real identity. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the earth. Looking closely at this statement, we have to understand that these verbs are indicative and not prescriptive. They indicate an existing condition, affirming who they are at the core of their existence. You are salt, you are light. Jesus does not prescribe who they should be, or who they should become. You are to be salt. You are to be light. Jesus does not ask them, do you want to be salt? Do you want to be light? Jesus affirms them. You are salt. You are light. In fact, we discover another crucial dimension of our identity, our faith, our spirituality, and it adds on to our cultural dis distinctiveness and biology. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the earth. You know, I don't know about you, about the Dagalog, the Spanish, the Cambodian. But in the Tongan language, two words differentiate the singular and plural second person, you. Unfortunately, English doesn't. So when Jesus says you in our context, it does not speak to a particular person, but addresses a human audience. No, no individual, no individual embodies salt or light, but the entire community, because we are all made and created in God's image. And that allows us to do the ultimate good, to love God and to love our neighbor. Therefore, we must exemplify what resembles the salt and light of which Jesus speaks. And it is precisely what Jesus says in verse 16. Listen carefully. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. It is not an imperative directly to the human audience. Instead, it's a command to the light itself. Why is it significant? Because it demands 
what already comprises the human es es essence and requires the human audience to be made even more manifest than what it is already is. It is not for us to accomplish any particular work. Instead, it allows the core of our essence, of our being, to be made more evident an influencer that illuminates others. In addition, these metaphors themselves speak about communal reality. Salt doesn't do much when it sits in the container in your kitchen, but it is most effective when used with other elements. I remember growing up when my grandparents used salt to preserve meat because they had no refrigerator. And I know some people, some of my friends who can only eat their food using salt, seasoning for good favor, flavor. In Jesus' day, it was common for farmers to salt their fields to add in the right mix of minerals to help crops grow. In the Hebrew word, the word we just translate as earth is literally ground or dirt. You are the salt of the ground, the salt of the dirt. Likewise, light also functions communally. In the absence of anything else, light serves a little function. Instead, for light to be most effective, it must emerge within a poorly illuminated environment, environment to brighten that which already exists so that others may perceive it in that place. So, church, as we listen to this passage during this season of Epiphany, the revelation of Christ in our midst, and given the declaration from our Lord about our true identity, who we are, who you are, how will we season? What will we light up? Or in other words, what is our role as Christians and as a church. Let me suggest that first, we must secure our faith and know that we bear God's image, an existing power that offers genuine compassion that enabling us to light on our lives for others. Second, let's ask the Holy Spirit to empower us, lead and guide us, we are facing the power of evil. And without the power of the Holy Spirit, we are fighting a losing battle. Third, allow ourselves as a vessel for the salt to season the ground and grow God's kingdom. Allow ourselves to be a conductor that conducts God's light to permeate the darkness. These are the expectations and blessings on us as we live to be the church. Jesus implies in this Sermon on the Mount that we don't really have a choice in this matter. And I don't mean we are forced into, into something against our will. What I mean and what I think he meant was that we are the representative of the church. Whether we consciously try to claim that role or not. People, neighbors, friends, and strangers will look at us and think, oh, so that is what it means to be part of the Christian faith. Or that is what, belong, that is what belonging to the church means in terms of how you live in the world. Jesus tells his disciples, the world may know you that you are my disciples 
if, if you love one another. We are called to live out our identity as salt and light, not only by words, but also in our actions. And let me share with you a, a prime example of that. It's our, it is our Philippines mission. Whenever I see the pictures posted on our Facebook of the church building and the work in progress, I know that hope of recruiting and nurturing more people to God's kingdom is in work. We can also do that at home, in our immediate family, at work, and in all places we meet people. At the end, Jesus says, we, if our righteousness not surpasses of ones of the Pharisees, we won't enter the kingdom of God. Let us do what we need to do. Practice who we are, our real identity. We are salt of the earth. And we are light of the world. Amen. We are postponing this part of our worship service till March 26, when our bishop comes to visit. So, A.V., let's uh, jump to the hymn. One bread, one body, and let's call Carrie uh, to lead us in the singing of this hymn.
al pueblo con el propio y lo ordenó con el anhelo de un paz que llevaría y por una justicia que nada falló bien en el sufrimiento y muerte de Jesús tomaste sobre ti nuestro pecado y muerte y destruyó su poder para siempre tú resucitaste de entre los muertos a tu este mismo Jesús y ahora reina contigo en gloria y derramaste sobre nosotros tu santo espíritu, haciéndonos el pueblo de tu nueva posición. Y el pueblo lo va a pedir. En el todo, hermano, hoy viene el pastor allá, en el pastor. Me ha dicho que estaba a pueblo, ¿no? Todo el mundo trae los que no ven, que no fue de ley, por favor. This table is open to all who recognize Jesus Christ as healer and redeemer. This table is open to all who work to bring God's kingdom here on earth to embrace the identity of light and salt. No one is turned away because of life circumstances. No one is far from this table. No one seeking God's abundant grace and mercy is ever turned aside. We see before us the abundance that a life of faith offers as we respond to God's everlasting mercy in prayer and deed. I invite you now to come forward to 
Salt and earth uh, and light. Thank you, Pastor K, for reminding us who we are. I don't know about you, but every time we gather on the first Sunday of the month for our joint service of Holy Communion, it, it gives me joy in my heart, given the fact that we live in a world that is so divided, where, where members of certain classes of people or even races get attacked for who they are, and here we are gathered together where those uh, nuggets of our identity are respected, honored, and celebrated. We are indeed light and salt of the earth. Carry this reality, this joy, this truth that we can be together as children of God out in the world, loving each other, respecting each other, rather than attacking and inflicting violence upon each other simply because of our racial or cultural identity. Amen? Amen. Let us uh, cover some announcements. Ah, we've got some birthday celebrants. Tomorrow, Jonah Torino, followed by her daughter, Michaela, Torino, and of course, Brenda will also be celebrating a birthday. Brenda will, in fact, be losing uh, the chance to celebrate a birthday. We will be up in the air, making our way from LAX to Singapore, but we'll, we'll celebrate her birthday when we get to Manila. So happy birthday to all this. Um, this is an interesting uh, uh, winter camp opportunity that I want to commend 
to all of our children. If interested, please contact Cecil Arceo. There might be scholarships available from the district or the conference. But please take note of this, February 18th to the 20th, and it will be in, am I, is that Wrightwood? It is at Camp Wrightwood. So children, uh, please consider this and look for Teacher Cecil. Two days after we return from the Philippines, it will be Ash Wednesday, and we will be preparing for Lent using this um, worship series called Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places. So our worship services uh, will look a little different during Lent because we're using this material, and we believe it will, it will prepare us in a very special way for the celebration of Easter this year, looking for love in all the wrong uh, places. Next slide. And of course, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday on the 22nd of this month, 7 p.m. And our dear Pastor Lynette uh, will be our preacher. Let's see, June, are you here? Oh, June is up there. You want to make this announcement? Oh, we've got, oh, oh, here we go. Watch the monitors. Hi, guys. I would like to invite you this time to the Barrio Campus to look at some family and young district for a life of love song. Please bring your parents, bring your friends, bring your sisters, bring your family, and bring all. All right, a night of love songs. When when is it going to be again? February 26. 26. Um, that video clip was produced by Mike Torino. And uh, did you notice that neat uh, drone shot? Uh, from, you know, on the frontage of the church. We have that capability and we glorify God for uh, uh, giving us a Mike Torino who is able to produce a wonderful first-rate first uh, video clips for the church. Thank you, Mike. Mark your calendars, folks. March 26, our new bishop is coming to visit us. And this is such a special treat. She's brand new, and she has chosen Santa Ana UMC to visit. She will be accompanied by our district superintendent, Sandy Olwine. I've been told that she does not want to preach. She wants to experience worship with us, and she wants the, an opportunity to just greet and speak with us after the worship service. So... Mark your calendars, March 26, it will be a joint communion service. So that means March 5, first Sunday of the month, we will not meet as we usually do. But we will meet as a joint communion service on March 26 instead. All right? I'm excited. Next slide. I would invite you to remember in prayer the members of our Philippine mission team, some of whom are already in Manila, like Jesse and Lily Rojas, Percy Lazaro, and Cherry Patricio, and Roger and Miriam Bernales. Tomorrow, June and Alpha Tomas and Brenda and myself will fly out to Manila. We will be there uh, for our mission weekend on February 10 to 12 uh, to engage in a service of revival 
a, a mission, a dental, a medical mission, uh, a sanitation project, and of course, the highlight of the mission weekend, the dedication of the new sanctuary that was built uh, thanks to your mission dollars. So please remember us in prayer until we return uh, the week of February 20. I think this is our last announcement today. As has been announced earlier, we will collect a special offering for our Welcome Home Baskets drive uh, benefiting Legacy Square. If you've been following uh, the updates from Doug, Legacy Square is almost 100% complete. And I think uh, a grand opening will be held sometime in March. So that means we need to be ready with our 33 welcome home baskets for the residents of those uh, 33 units designated for persons coming out of shelters, coming out of homelessness. Right now, we only have, we have 20 complete baskets. I mean, we have the resources to complete 20 baskets. We still need 13, and therefore, we will collect a special offering again this, uh, this morning. So let me invite Carrie to come out and lead us in singing God be with you till we meet again. And as we are singing the hymn, please come forward and drop your special offering. My friends, no matter how reluctant we might be to be salt and light to the world, be assured that you do not have to be by yourself. No matter how dim we feel our light may be, know that we shine brighter because we go forth with the light of Christ. Remember that no matter where we go, or what we do, we do so with a certainty that God 
has called us by name, and we are his. Go forth, therefore, in the love, grace, and peace of God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.